Hello again. This is part two of our tutorials, uh, the last one, which hopefully you've already seen. If you haven't, there's a link in the description below the video. It was about how to set up your cell phone or your video camera to record. Um, we're going to assume for the purpose of this video that you have successfully recorded your video and that it is satisfactory to you that you're reading whatever it is you've been assigned to do sounds good. So now your recording is on your cell phone or it's on your video camera and you need to get it off. If it's on the video camera it could be in your internal memory or it could be in one of these, an SD card. If it's in the SD card, it's relatively simple. It simply pops out of a slot somewhere on the side or the back of your video camera. And it goes into a slot on the side of your computer. On my computer, the slot is right there next to the thumb drive. And the SD card goes in there. Obviously, I didn't put it in the whole way. Once it's in, Windows will recognize the card. Um, your Apple iOS, if that's what you use, should do the same. And then it's a simple matter of doing a drag and drop to put the video file where you want it on your computer. If it's in the internal memory, then you use the cord that came with your camera to transfer data. Um, if it doesn't have a removable cord, if it does not have an external memory card, uh, hopefully you have the cord for your camera. Uh, otherwise, if you can't transfer data off of it, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. But once you connect it again, your operating system on your computer should recognize it. The cord will go into one of the USB slots. Your operating system should recognize it, and then it's simply a matter of dragging and dropping the file to where you need it on your computer. If it's on your phone, you can very easily transfer the data off of a phone uh, simply by using your data service. If you need to put it onto your computer, if you want to archive it or whatever, simply use the charging cord that came with your phone. You can replace these. You can get them easily at any of the Walmart, Best Buy, Meyer, whatever, any of the drugstores. One side goes into the USB plug on your computer. The other one will have the plug that goes into your phone and it'll be drawing power off your computer, but it will also allow you to transfer data. Some phones you may have to authorize the transfer of data. It may pop up on the screen and ask you, do you want to allow data transfer? You just need to be aware of that and make sure that you check with the mark, yes. But now we're going to look at that you just want to use your data service to get the video off. Most likely, uh, somebody else is going to be in charge of putting the pieces of the video together into a complete service. Here at St. Michael's, I'm the one who does that, so somebody else has recorded their video and needs to send it to me. Um, we have two ways of doing it. Uh, one is a little more complex than the other, uh, but in a way it's more reliable. However, We'll start off with the simple way. So, you bring up your phone and you want to send it through Facebook. You cannot send video files through email, certainly not high definition. You can send a small video file that's a, a low definition and very short through an email, but the limit on size is too small to send what videos that we're talking about. 
So we come into Facebook, and this little tab right up here next to the magnifying glasses, the search, and just below the clock is for Messenger. You tap on that, and you'll have a list of your contacts. Uh, you just have to scroll through the list and find the person you need to send it to. Since I'm the one who normally receives it, in this case, I'm going to select Paula Miller, my priest in charge. You'll notice right down here at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the space with the two A's in it. That's your text field for entering the message that you want to send. To attach, you'll see right next to the microphone, that's if you want to do an audio recording. But next to it is a picture icon. That's supposed to be a sun over a hill. You tap on that. And it brings up pictures of what is in your camera storage. If it has a little number icon on it, that tells you it's a video of six seconds, a little test video that I made. So we tap on that. It'll ask me, do I want to edit or send? Just say send. And there it is attached. Now, since she doesn't know what I'm doing, then I send that off to her. I hit that little arrow icon, and the message has gone off. That is going to be the simplest way to do it. There are Facebook may scale this down to 720. If it does, we can live with that. Once you're done with that, now the person who has who is going to be putting the video together has received it. The other way to send it, the way that we use at St. Michael's for most of us, is through a private YouTube account. It's private only in the sense that we don't share it uh, that widely. It is set up simply for the purpose of sharing videos. I happen to be the person who handles it. And I share the uh, password and the access information with people as they ask for it. And that also means that if somebody new comes up, I have to pay attention to it if it gives me an alert asking, are you sure this is really you? And then I have to say yes. Um, it'll pop up through the app on my phone, and I get an email notice. The only reason, the good thing for doing this is that there are no size limitations on what you can send through YouTube. So we're back to our phone. We have to go into the YouTube app. On my Samsung device, it is here in a folder labeled Google, because YouTube is a Google service. And you look for the YouTube icon. Obviously, on your phone, or your tablet or the mobile device. It may be someplace else, so you'll have to look for it. So we open it up. Now the icon up here shows that I'm already logged into St. Michael's. That happens to be the window up above the altar in the church. I tap here and it says account. St. Michael's Episcopal Church. And then it gives the email address that goes with it. Um, if you are looking to change that, you tip the down arrow right next to the account name, and it shows the accounts. It has mine. It has the two St. Michael's accounts. The bottom one that doesn't have the window image is the public one, where we share our videos every week. 
If you've already logged in and you have this saved as an account on your phone or other mobile device, then you simply tap it. If it isn't there, then you would hit the plus sign up here at the top. And that would be where it would ask you to put in the email address and the phone number. If you're new to this, then of course I would have sent you an email that would tell you exactly what to put in and where. Uh, if you're from an outside congregation and you're looking to do it this way yourselves, then one of you would be responsible for setting up this account for determining what the email, it has to be a Gmail address because it has to be a Google account, uh, what that address is going to be, what the password is going to be, and then you have to share it with your other parishioners who are doing recordings and uh, keeping an eye on the security notices to make sure that nobody gets rejected. Uh, because their IP address isn't recognized or something like that. So we click here on St. Michael's Episcopal Church. Then to upload, we go to the plus icon right down here at center. And it asks me, do I want to go live or do I want to upload a video? Uh, we may discuss, I may do a video on going live at another time. But obviously right now that's uh, not an immediate priority. So we want to upload a video. So now much like we saw with the Facebook, uh, it brings up pictures of what's here, except that now YouTube is only interested in the videos that I have. It's ignoring the various pictures. So we're going to do a video that I did of the front sign of the church. That's from several weeks ago. I'm going to create a title. Oops. Test video. Add a description. If you've seen our videos, you know roughly what I put in there, which the test, the video title will be the uh, the day of the month based on what Sunday it is on the liturgical calendar, then the actual date, and then St. Michael's Lincoln Park, simply to make it easiest to search. Then down in the text, I give more information on the particular Sunday that we are celebrating, uh, and maybe some reference to the scripture reading, as well as I put uh, the website and the Facebook link to the, for St. Michael's. Okay, we're done there. We'll hit the arrow back. The next item down is the privacy settings or how much notice is given. Your options are unlisted, private, scheduled, or up here at the top, public. Public, of course, as it says, means anyone can see it. Since this is simply a video, since you're only submitting part of a video for your own reading that is then going to be put into a larger video, leave it as unlisted. Location, we don't need to worry about. Playlists, we don't need to worry about. So now, up here at the top, you click the Next button. All right, is this video made for kids? As you can see, that is required by the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. It honestly doesn't matter which one you select. Yes, it's made for kids. No, it's not. Uh, if you select yes, then it simply means there'll be no targeted advertising on it, uh, and it will not allow the chat, uh, it will not allow comments. Uh, I often will select no on the final video because I do want people to be able to give comments. We're too small to have to worry about advertising. Uh, so, and then below, no, don't restrict my video again. That's for people who are, you know, sharing video games that have mature content in it. Don't worry about that. So then we go to upload. 
and it will begin to upload. Uh, since this is just a test video, I'm not going to do it. Um, it will come up and basically tell you that it is in the process of uploading and how long it will take. You do not have to leave the window open for the entire time that it's uploading. So that covers it dealing with your phone. If we're going to look at your computer, um, you can do it exactly the same way. Doing it on Facebook is very much the same. Simply go into Messenger. It's this, the icon is the same. You're looking for the little picture icon, and then you need to upload the the video um, and simply send it off. Um, Facebook is slightly different. Bring that up for you. Here we're in Google. It's a little bit more complicated here in that you need to sign in to Google. You can't just do it through Facebook. You can't just do it rather through YouTube, excuse me. Uh, so sign out of your own account. You want to be able to see this sign in icon up here in the upper right. So click sign in. I want St. Michael's Episcopal Church. Um, again, if you're from another congregation and you're setting up one of your own, then you would need to share the email address. If you're from St. Michael's and you've never done this before, then you need to put in this email address. Again, you uh, ask me for the information and I send it to you and it will have this email. You can simply cut and paste it out of the email I send you and put it in and then you put in the password. Um, in that case, you would come here and you would use the use another account and it would it will ask you how to do that. It will ask you for the email and then for the password information. So in this case, we will select St. Michael's Episcopal Church. And we will put in the password. And then up here in the corner, again, we have the window. Now we go to YouTube. We need to go to your videos. The direct way to uploading is simply up here on the upper right. This little image that looks like an old style camera with the plus symbol in it, where it says create. Click on that. Again, we see upload video and go live. Right now, obviously, we don't want to go live. Now you click here, select files. These are files from the last video that people sent me. We'll label it as test video. You can upload a thumbnail. Um, if this was the final video you were doing, you would want to do that. Um, but since this is simply a part of it, we don't need to worry about it because it's not going public. Uh, down here is the notice for the Children's Online Privacy Act. Click yes or no, your choice. And you'll see that it is already processing the video. The uh, standard definition version is at 95%. Video elements. This is if you wanted to promote videos. We're not big enough to do that, so uh, we don't worry about that. Just click Next. And again, here we want to leave it as unlisted. 
If you were putting up a final video, you would want it to be public. Or if you wanted it to go live at a particular time, then you can schedule it. That again is entirely up to you. But if you're simply doing what we're talking about here, posting a portion of a video, simply leave it as unlisted. And now click Save. And here it says Video Published. Um, then if you with St. Michael's, you simply send me an email letting me know that, yes, you've published it. Probably I'll see it, but sometimes I don't. Or if I'm busy, I may not get in to check the account all that regularly. Uh, and if you're with an outside congregation, contact the person who is handling your account for you. When you're done, you click Close. And now we see the two videos, the test video that I uploaded from the phone, and then the one I just did here. And then you also can see what other people have done. Paula Miller's video for Thanksgiving. And then the closing hymn from our last Sunday service. Once you're done with this, Go back to Google. And sign out. That way you will not continue to get notices every time that somebody else posts something on the private account. Um, also, if it should pop up and ask to verify information, if you are not the one managing the account, Simply tell it that what is there is okay. Do not change anything because that can cause issues. That covers how to transfer your video files back to the person who is doing the editing. Uh, sorry if this was a little bit disjointed. It didn't work out quite as smoothly as I had hoped to. But I hope that it gets the point across and uh, that this has uh, given you information that assists you in getting the job done. So thank you very much. And we will move on to the next video, um, which should be up uh, available shortly. Thank you.